There's no question, nothing can grab a neighborhood's attention quite like this. At first it was pretty, before they got here, it was, it was raging pretty, pretty strong. Some heard the sirens first. They just kept getting closer and closer and coming from different directions, so I knew something was up real close. Fire crews battled the flames here for about an hour early this morning along 147th Avenue up on the hillside near Elmore and the Armin Road. Some neighbors took video of what the flames looked like before help arrived. Bystanders have an idea of what could have started it. We just watched it for a while while they're trying to get it under control. And a friend of mine talked to the owner of the house, and he said that, that there was a, a charcoal grill. Crews say a big challenge in fighting this fire was right here. There are no fire hydrants on the hillside, so firefighters had to deal with this, trucking in water and dumping it into these big containers. And unfortunately, uh, that contributed to a, uh, a delay uh, uh, just by nature of the geography up here. The family living in the home got out okay, and amid so much destruction, there is some other good news, too. We were able to save the, the garage and the boat, but I'm afraid the house is a different story. Neighbors here wish this whole scene was a different story. This is not the kind of attention they'd like. Jason Lamb, Channel 2 News. If you buy gas, you know the price is going up and up and up. Well, they're going to keep going up. They're going up terrible fast. I'm afraid of what's going to happen this summer. And all the complaining. I just think, where are we going to stop? I can't keep up with it. It's going up so fast. Is as plain as those pesky numbers. 383 for unleaded. 383 a gallon? Oh, how quickly our perspective can change. If you buy gas, then you know the price is going up and up and up. Just the last couple weeks, it has risen. Quite a bit, yeah. It's going up rapidly, yeah. Here in Anchorage, a gallon of regular gas anywhere from $1.58 to $1.65 a gallon. $1.58? $1.72? Oh, I wish those days had come back. How many years ago was that? Oh my golly, $1.58 a gallon. Wouldn't we like to have that now? Ah. Oh. $1.58. Huh? I, I, I'm just, uh, give me a second to think. Seems so cheap compared to now. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. Time has a funny way of turning the past into something you simply forgot. Close to an all-time high of $1.69 a gallon. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, with all the unrest in the in the East right now, it's it's scary. But forget about long-term fixes for the moment. Well, shoot, I love to have back $1.58 because it means I can fill up my tank faster. <laughs> <laughs> At this gas station, it looks like the solution to stop all that bickering is a way-back machine set to 2003. I'd love to get back down there. About $1.50 a gallon sounds good to me. The whole world would be happier. Eight years ago, doctors diagnosed Ian Ives from Eagle River with leukemia, and it took a stranger half a world away to save his life with a stem cell transplant, a priceless act of compassion. But sometimes the best moments in life are the unexpected ones. Channel 2's Jason Lamb and photojournalist Carolyn Hall Jensen have this story of the perfect gift. Ask any Alaskan, and they'll tell you. Awesome. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Living here is a gift. I mean, what else? What? Why? What else would you want to look at? I mean, we live in Alaska, right? And this is uh, this is what we. This is why we love to be here. Can you say hi? No. How about if you say hi this way? Ian Ives holds it close. <laughs> because before there was this. Oh, and here's the other one. There was that day in the emergency room back in 2003. Diagnosis, leukemia. Ian was dying. It's the, the uh, unknown, the loss of control, the, um, the feeling that you've got so much more to give, more to live. A stem cell transplant was Ian's best shot at holding on, but they had to find a match, someone who could give Ian a gift. Nope, this one didn't work out. Nope, this one didn't work out. And you're thinking, okay, you know. No luck 
until a guy in Germany named Alex showed up on a stem cell registry. A total stranger, but a perfect match 4,000 miles away. Alex shipped over his stem cells. It was hard to, to not be able to, you know, say thank you right off the bat. The transplant, a success. Ian got to go home. I've always been very creative. He used his imagination to help bring back his spirit. The camel chemo ribbons. With projects only an Alaskan could dream of. Camo's my favorite color. Is it really a color? I think it should be. <laughs> But Ian's creativity wouldn't stop at ribbons. Soon, he set his sights on this six-foot piece of birch. This one had some really interesting darks and lights and whatnot, and um, but yeah, I'm gonna make something out of this. Seven years later, there we go. and it's finally finished. I always thought about selling it, but I mean, it has so much meaning because it was part of my, you know, my, I guess, my therapy. So instead, it's headed to the Providence Cancer Center. It's a gift. It's a way of giving back so that everybody, I mean, how do you say thank you to everybody? There you go. It's a small token compared to the gift that I've been given. But there's a funny thing about gifts. Sometimes they'll surprise you. It's the next step. Yeah, it sure is. When it does happen, it's a big day. It's a big day. What does it take to turn a total stranger... You haven't met him at all, huh? Uh-uh. ...into someone you love? I feel like it's everything coming full circle, like the piece of our family that's been missing. Remember Alex from half a world away? Yeah, but it was all, you know, anonymous. Anonymous. Until when? Until now. All right. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Yeah. I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> Finally, Ian's family got the chance to do what just about anybody would after getting that gift eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've done what everybody has to do. Oh. Nobody. Yes. Oh, that's a beautiful family. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Consider this a very personal thank you note. Everything I have, mm. every because it would have been, mm. it wouldn't have been not, mm. wouldn't wouldn't have been here. There's a lot to talk about: their families, their lives, and the day that turned everything around. We were in good spirits, mm. and uh, then it was within a matter of hours, mm. my blood type changed, mm. and everything. Good. It's, yep, it's a, same as yours. <laughs> it's hard to tell who really received the gift here, but one thing is clear. To meet the person um, which I've given a new life, this is just incredible. It's perfect. Come on, honey. You ready to go? Ah, oh, sweet. Mm. Alex and his family will be here throughout next week. They leave to go back to Germany on the 24th after their Alaskan vacation. Glenn Godfrey died before help ever arrived. For a drive that should have taken less than 10 minutes, it took 49 minutes for an ambulance to find the Godfrey home because of confusion over two similarly named streets. If you had a bunch of bluebirds right next to each other, bluebird court, bluebird circle, bluebird drive, and they all intersect each other, um, and particularly if they curve and bend so that they switch back and forth between north addressing and south addressing, um, it gets really confusing for humans and computers, and you don't want confusion in the middle of a life-threatening circumstance. After the Godfrey incident, the city's addressing department began compiling a list of problem streets in Anchorage, street names that the city is considering changing to avoid that kind of confusion. That could cause a real problem if you don't know where you are. Say you're visiting from out of town, or I don't know, maybe you're on conscience or, or something along those lines. There's a, there's a big, big room for error trying to figure out where you're located. Confusing or even duplicate street names are not uncommon in Anchorage. In the addressing department's most recent list, there are 112 streets identified as problem streets. Duplicate street names within the same community are first on the list to be changed. So, do you live on a problem street? The addressing department first told Channel 2 you'd have no way of knowing for sure until the city makes the decision to change the name. 
No. No, the, we, we notify people when we get to that street name change. There's no sense in um, worrying anyone before it's necessary. But if you're on the list, it may be a long time before the city gets to your street. Carlene is the only person working in her department. Since 2008, the department says it's changed only 11 street names. Remember, there are 112 on the problem list. But it might be fair to say then, I mean, if, if you're maybe not right at the top of that list, uh, you could be waiting three years. You could be your name. It could be longer even before we get to the number six priorities. You know, number one priorities obviously are going to be the first ones we want to get to. So we asked the addressing department to release the full list to us. Is that a list that we can get a hold of? No, it's for internal use only. And why? And that's just for our purposes. It's just a list that is maintained by our department or um, added to by the police and fire departments if they run across problem streets that they think need to be dealt with. Wilson says there is a search engine on the addressing department's website where you can type in any address and any duplicates will show up. But it doesn't specifically say if the city has placed that duplicate on the problem streets list. So because of the public safety concerns about emergency response and problem street names, Channel 2 asked the higher-ups at City Hall for the complete list. And within a couple hours, we got it. But in the Turnigan neighborhood on Thanksgiving Day, that is where traditional traditions end. So this is the running of the turkeys that takes place every Thanksgiving. Ah, uh, the transformation is coming about right now. Go, 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 go. I don't really know all the names, but pretty much most of these people come here every year. Thanksgiving just wouldn't be complete for the Browns. Hi, Valerie. It's nice to see you. Or the Faulkners or the Ways. And I thought I looked silly. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Without their favorite stuffed bird. She's the proud wife of a turkey. I married a turkey. <laughs> she did. <laughs> well, I think we're all going to follow that funky chicken down the road. This is phenomenal. I mean, look, there are even more people coming. I guess we're going to have to wait a little while. <laughs> you guys remember, it's not about the race. It's all about the pace, OK? The objective is actually gain calories on this run. One, two, three. Oh, The short route goes this way. <laughs> you could learn a lot from a running turkey about staying together during the holidays. Because a lot of us don't have too much family in town, so we like to get all the neighbors out and have a good time. Because even if you don't finish first in this giant feast for the eyes, next year I'm going to train. Hey! you can still appreciate. It's my daughter. She made me look good by coming in after me. I appreciate that. I know, I try. She is. She's a giver. This feast for the heart. Love you, Pete. So let the folks back east keep their big balloon parades. My daughter is, she's still out there. She's six, and I remember carrying her the, f uh, the first time we did it. Because in Anchorage lies another kind of family tradition. Uno, dos, tres. That would make even Macy's jealous. I love it. Thanks, 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 thanks